Hi, it's Paul from Derivan, and today we're going to have a look at adding some impasto medium with palette knife to a limited colour palette. So those of you who are watching a previous video on just three colours, cobalt, teal, cad orange and magenta, we've created a painting using just that. Have a look at this. Here's the final product using just cobalt teal, magenta, cat orange, some impasto medium and just palette knives, no brush. So let's see how it came about. So with this painting, we're using impasto medium for the whole painting, but we're not throwing the impasto on at random. We're going to follow the shapes of the form that we're trying to depict. And we're using a limited palette, magenta, cat orange and cobalt teal. We're also using impasto medium here. And we're using these three colours that we used in the last colour mixing exercise. So if you watched that, you'll have a few clues as to what we're doing. Now the other fun thing we're doing is just using a palette knife for the whole of the picture. So once you've got a few areas down, the trick is to mix up clean parts of paint. So see how each of these areas on the palette is quite clean and quite separate from the next. And when we pick those up and deliver them to the painting, we join them to the next section. So just bring it down and join it up to the trees or the next item. The other thing is when applying with the palette knife, always follow the form of the object. So if that's a tree or a mountain, put it coming down, push it along, and bring it down. Don't put it on at random or it'll look somewhat strange. So remember we need to work fairly quickly and work side by side linking all of those tones. Remember the reason why we stop one piece of paint is because the next piece of paint is darker or lighter than the last one. You'll also notice that I haven't really gone back into anywhere yet. We're just covering the board at this stage. Follow the form of the tree and bring it down. And don't over mix the paint. See how it's sort of stringy as it comes through and it's almost stripy as it comes off the palette knife. This will actually help in the end picture. If it's all over mixed it can sometimes look a bit blocky. So when throwing in the foreground again follow the form of the object but remember it's grass or flat planes so just bring them in and suggest lines. I'm going to pop in some dark trees at the top. And then this should help push those mountains back. So we need a fairly good dark here. So spend time mixing colour, a lot of time on your palette and a little bit at the top. So see how that nice dark there sends those hills further back. Just going to introduce a little bit of that ground colour into the sky. And bring that sky down to the edge. Notice we just drove over the top of that hill and it doesn't matter. Mix up a nice lump of sky here, drop some extra paint, give it a whisk, not too much and away you go. Bring it over the hill, over the tree, into the clouds. But keep it nice and thick and luscious. Let's suggest a little building here. See how easy it is to chisel it out with a palette knife? And remember we haven't touched a brush yet and we're actually not going to. So as you can see with just that limited palette we've been able to get from very very dark colours through to very very light and a huge colour difference from these reds and orange and pink through to these softer bluey greens to an olivey green. So it is quite a wide range from three unlikely colours. So let your imagination go wild and don't always stick to these three, just vary it a bit and give it a go.